How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Godfall video and today we're going to be talking about lore, all things lore and what we have available to actually discuss. The Godfall Twitter account has tweeted a number of lore snippets that I want to go through today and basically just explore. Obviously at this point it's all speculation and anything I do say will probably be conjecture but it's always fun to explore what we can right as you know me i'm a lore buff i do love the lore in games and any game that actually has a rich lore that is actually interesting has me hooked already so without further ado let's get cracking the first tweet that they made was the history of apirian it reads cosmera made the world when she devoured herself now here we can clearly see cosmera must be some form of goddess that basically sacrificed her own life in order to create the world that we're going to be playing in the archons were her dreams and they dreamt hungrily of existence there was nothing to satisfy the hunger but her own flesh from the ruins of Kazmera's body, the Archon stepped forth into existence. Now what's interesting here is the fact that the Archons were her dreams and they dreamt hungrily of existence. So though they manifested originally as a dream, they soon became a reality. In order for them to become real, to manifest as a real being, a real entity, these Archons, which in Greek means ruler, these Archons needed Cosmera to devour herself, essentially allowing the Archons to feed off her own flesh, to create the world and allow the Archons to step forth into existence. It's a really twisted, mind-blowing thing that's, no matter how many times I read this, just is very difficult to get your head around but Cosmera dreamed of the Archons as these entities and she wanted those entities to exist which leads me to assume Cosmera was an all-powerful goddess in order to do this she had to sacrifice herself the star within her in order to create the world you see in Godfall that of course then gave rise to the Archons of her dreams to become a reality of course does this extend further or not is yet to be seen then we have the fall of Archons book one we Valerians were their first design. All 12 Archons collaborated to craft us forms that they would also eventually use. We had always believed they made us in their image, but they would ultimately make themselves too well in ours. So it's clear that these Archons that came forth from Chimera had the ability, just like her, to create. But unlike her, where she had to sacrifice herself in order to create the world. I assume because these Archons are creating on a much smaller scale, creating these Valerian Knights, they didn't have to go through that ritual of sacrifice. Therefore, they had the power to create what they wanted in order to increase their power. The Fall of the Archons, Book 2. The people of Aperion had misunderstood the Archon's nature. They should have stayed as gods of ideal. When they spun themselves physical shapes, incarnating themselves into the physical realm, they became trapped by the sins of mortality. So basically, the Archons made the cardinal sin. Originally seen as gods as an ideal, once they became a manifestation of a physical form within this new world that Kazmera created, they were trapped by the sins of mortality, which means they would basically live, age and die. They could get, they would succumb to illness and everything else. The laws of godship was no longer applying here. This is really important because I feel the Archons at the time didn't realize that this would be the price they paid by gaining their physical form. As they say, sometimes the price is a little too high. We go over to the Upheaval Book 6. Overcome by mortal anger, jealousy and ambition, the Archons quarrelled among themselves. It is said that when kings quarrel, they argue using armies. We Valerians were made by the Archons to be their armies, and so with little choice, we argued. So as you can see here, the mortality of the actual Archons are becoming more and more apparent. 
they're starting to experience human emotions with anger, jealousy, they want to achieve more, hence the ambition, but if one person takes a bigger quadrant of the pie, the other one wants some too, and considering there was multiples of these Archons, a power struggle began to emerge, and as they were creating these Valerians to basically stand by their side and be the warriors and do the fighting that they wanted, eventually you had the struggle that we have seen in the past where when two nations are fighting over one place, the biggest army generally wins and that is basically what's happened here and little by little the Valerians who were created by the Archons are now being forced to step into that ring and become the shield to the onslaught that's about to ensue. The Fall of Archons Book 4 with the Valerians as their great armies, each Archon according to their nature and their hunger, again the use of the word hunger is very important here because it's used throughout, be it conquest or be it mercy for the conquered made war. We did not know how deeply Cosmera's hunger had chewed into our souls then, we would learn. And as you can see here, again it's going back to Cosmera, it's going back to that hunger of creation where Cosmera's hunger created the new world and brought forth these Archons. Little did the Archons actually know that the hunger that Cosmera used in order to sacrifice herself to give that world, to manifest these Archons into the world, would soon pass on to them. And as it says here, we did not know how deeply Cosmera's hunger had chewed into our souls then, we would learn. So now they've started to realise that the hunger that Cosmera actually had in order to give birth to everything from the offset is now deeply entwined within them and is actually shaping their views and judgments and thought processes when it comes to everything else and it's something that's actually causing a big conflict. At least that's the way I'm seeing this. Upheaval Book 8 the Archons' unwavering belief in their own perfection would doom us if we continued to follow them. They had to be stopped. We could not allow them to corrode our attempts to build a true civilization. Now, is this the Valerians revolting against the Archons, or is this the people revolting against the Archons? I don't believe the people would have the power to stand up to the Archons, so it does sound like the Valerians that the Archons actually created in their image to actually be their sword and shield and fight for them, actually decided to revolt against their masters, the Archons, because of their own unwavering belief in their own perfection. No one is perfect, and if you assume you're perfect in every way, shape or form, everyone else is imperfect, and you try to pass on that judgement to everything else. This in turn creates war, and as such, it seems here that the Valerians realised this and decided that enough's enough, we need to put a stop to them and that the only way to build a new civilization was to put an end to them, or at the very least seal them away. The Upheaval Book 12 It did not escape us that the Archons never worked together. It would be difficult for one of us to take on an Archon and win, but unlike them, we were not alone. Even if they would not work together, we Valerians could. And this solidifies my point earlier. The Valerians basically created a whole rebellion against the Archons. They knew that the Archons are so far apart in terms of working together and wanting to collaborate that they would never help one another out. Whereas the Valerians who were created by the Archons, who were being treated in a way just pretty much like a meat shield, banded together and decided enough was enough, make a plan, make a rebellion and take them out one by one. Standing alone, a single Valerian cannot take out an Archon. They knew this, but together the Valerians are a force to be reckoned with and then do they stand a chance in taking out an Archon. The question is now, after they take out the first Archon, would the other Archons actually band together a look upon the defeated Archon as a weakling and just ignore the situation. The upheaval book 12 continues, the price in blood was high but we had done it. All 12 of the Archons were sent screaming, back to the realm of dreams and spirit. Now the real work could be done. We could build a true society. 
So it seems the Archons didn't band together, they didn't come together to take on the might of the Valerians. Instead, they decided, as you would expect, to tackle the threat one Archon at a time. But with the Valerians banding together and becoming a force to reckon with, they were too powerful for each of the Archons. And by the end of it, the 12 Archons were all defeated and sent back to the realm of dreams and spirit, where they manifested from Chimera. Now with Chimera gone and the planet itself being stable, the Archons that she manifested, having been sent back to where they came from, the Valerians that were created by the Archons are now left to build and thrive on from what is left and create the society, the true society as they say, for the rest of civilization. Well everyone, that's pretty much a breakdown of all the snippets that was on Twitter. That is my interpretation of everything here. You let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these, any other theories, any other ideas, because as you know, nothing is set in stone here. We haven't played the game, we haven't seen any story, we haven't seen any action element in terms of progressing the story, any cutscenes, any cinematics, we've seen nothing as of yet. So how this will all play out is still a mystery, but what we can see from these, it does follow a set timeline where it goes from Kazmera the Goddess existing to her creating the world bringing forth the Archons into existence, the Archons then creating the Valerians, the Archons using the Valerians as their meat shield, the Archons then basically fighting for territory like normal humans would, Archons realizing that they're no longer immortal, which means that if they take another Archon out, they would actually gain territory. So this became an all out war, with the Valerians realizing what was going on, they basically banded together to take out the Archons and rebuild civilization in a much more controlled and condensed way. Right guys, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything that you feel I covered differently or you feel might have been portrayed differently. All thoughts are valid at this point. I'd love to hear them. Let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for stopping by and watching this video. If you found this video entertaining, useful, informative, please hit that like button because it does help the video get noticed. Hit that red button so you can subscribe for more awesome Godfall content as and when it's available. Hit that bell to stay up to date of all content I release, including Godfall naturally. And obviously if you've come here to see the Godfall content, you're gonna wanna hit that bell to stay up to date of all Godfall content I release. That said, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for being here. And until the next video, Godfallers remain legend. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you look over to the left, you'll find a video that I'm recommending to you that I think you might actually enjoy. On the right, you'll see a video that is recommended by YouTube. I really do hope you enjoyed the video and until the next one, remember to always remain legend.